This episode is sponsored by FusionAuth. In case you haven't heard, there's a vacancy in AWS's C-suite. Rachel Thornton, AWS's chief marketing officer, has left. What should customers and onlookers expect from the cloud service's next chief marketing officer? It probably won't shock you that I have some thoughts about this. A lot of thoughts. So many really good thoughts that I've decided to submit a very public, unsolicited letter to AWS's executive leadership team. In fact, I have it with me right here. So please, allow me to read it to you. <clears throat> Dear Matt Garman, it pleases me to submit my candidacy as the next Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer for Amazon Web Services. The expression of a role like this always comes down to the unique perspective of the person in the job. So permit me to expound on why I believe I would be the best think big candidate for this role. I don't need that, I'll speak from the heart. First, a role like this requires having walked a mile in the customer's shoes and I am a long-standing AWS customer myself. I've seen firsthand what aspects of AWS's marketing resonate, which fail to gain traction and which subject the company to mockery and derision. You couldn't ask for more customer obsession than when the person marketing AWS services to customers is a customer themselves. Second, marketing necessitates telling stories about what the customer's experience would be if they use your product or service. I'm a consummate storyteller, as evidenced by the ridiculous number of posts I've been able to write about AWS over the past six years. Third, as a business unit with an $80 billion run rate, AWS is clearly focused on how it's going to drive the next $80 billion. While it's true that the AWS bill never gets smaller on its own, AWS obviously wants to accelerate adoption by new customers. Fortunately, this resonates with me since I lack any semblance of patience whatsoever. Throughout my time with Last Week in AWS and the Duckbill Group, I've been a big believer in biasing for action. To that end, I've taken the liberty of showing how I envision the VP slash CMO role unfolding in my first 30, 60, and 90 days. Every application needs authentication, presumably, but just like deciding to buy a car rather than create your own, there are some things where it's safer not to build it yourself from spare parts. Auth is one of them. In fact, I dare say that doing that with Auth would be awful. Fusion Auth is authentication built for developers by developers. They know how to put developers in the driver's seat, but also how to keep them out of the pilot's seat because everyone flying their own helicopter is both insane and terrifying. What's cool about Fusion Auth is that you can host it yourself anywhere you want, or if you're not into that, they will host it for you in a private, dedicated instance in the cloud instead of a shared service. They have a free version that has no limit on volume, and thousands of applications depend on it today. They know Auth, they're not zeros, if you know what I'm putting down. So before you build it or get stuck with an expensive alternative, Check them out at snark.cloud slash fusion. Check them out at snark.cloud slash fusion off. They're not awful. In my first 30 days, I'll obviously begin by going through the usual AWS onboarding that applies to all new hires. As soon as is practical, I'll emerge from that process just long enough to set two small things in motion. The first is take ownership by meeting with key stakeholders to determine the longer-term vision around AWS's marketing strategy, whatever that might be, and map it to current marketing efforts such as they are. As the parable of Chesterton's fence teaches us, only a fool removes something without understanding why it's there in the first place. And I'm many things, but I, I do flatter myself by assuming that I'm very rarely as foolish as I sometimes present as. And secondly, just to 
see what the waters look like around a very common AWS practice, uh, specifically giving things unfortunate or confusing names, I'm gonna find the nearest conference room to my office and then rename it. Who objects? What obstacles arise along the way? And most relevant to me, exactly how much can I get away with? Let's call this an experiment and learn and be curious. This brings us to my first 60 days. AWS is clearly a data-driven business. So by the end of my second month with AWS, I'll have consumed and synthesized the graphs and charts and long form written narratives that are littered throughout the company. After processing my initial reactions, oh, that's why it's that way. Wait, did they seriously think that that would work? <laughs> that would have wound up in front of a congressional committee if they tried that. I'll presumably have gotten enough context to understand not merely the what, but also the why of AWS's offerings. Early indications from analyst conversations with Gartner and all the other shops will show a rising sense among customers that service naming at AWS is no longer the disaster that it's historically been. While the new names are certainly not terrific, they're at least amusing to a given service's target audience, or so the analysts will find. And in a crowning achievement for my second month, AWS Infinidash will at long last launch to worldwide fanfare and renown. Finally, in my first 90 days, I'll be ready to really shine. By then, I'll have renamed all of the buildings that constitutes Amazon Seattle campus to reinvent. Remote work will increase dramatically due to the fact that nobody can find their offices anymore. The email system will sag as it views every subject line as a reply to a message that doesn't exist and ties itself in knots. Andy Jassy will awaken one morning to discover that his middle name is now Corey. A Quinnipiac poll will then show Andy's popularity surging wildly among every demographic, and he'll begin to consider a run for office. As you can see, the face of AWS will change dramatically when I take the helm as Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer. I know that I'll deliver results like these because, after all, I'm right. A lot. I want to thank you for taking the time to read this very public letter, and I look forward to hearing back from your team regarding next steps. Snuggles and rainbows, Corey Quinn. P.S. Please consider the environment before having this letter tattooed upon your torso.